Hello, my friends. It's your buddy, Phil. Welcome to the Project Leadership Institute podcast, where we talk about all things project management. Today, we're going to talk about a huge decision many project managers face, and that is, should I become a full-time hire or should I be a consultant? Well, let's examine this one by one. So a little bit of background about me. I've worked more as a consultant in my professional life than as a full-time hire. I've probably worked as a full-time hire for a quarter of my professional life. The other 75% has been a consultant, so I can share a lot of the pros and a lot of the cons with you. So why don't we jump in and talk about this? Being a full-time direct hire has immense benefits. First of all, you're not looking for work incessantly. you got job security. you got benefits. Sometimes you got really ridiculously good benefits, health insurance, paid time off. you got a steady income. You've got the opportunity to learn and grow with a company. And you've got a chance to build relationships with colleagues. The cons of being a full-time direct hire is, for people like me that are like a kid in the candy store, it could very quickly become boring. There's less flexibility. You don't have as much flexibility. And you may be limited to working on projects within a specific industry or field with the same people. And that's not a problem if you are not like a kid in the candy store. If you're not distracted by the world around you and you're able to focus and hone in and you don't get bored very quickly, then this is a great place for you. If you do not have ambitions outside the walls of a company, then this is for you. This is also a good place to be when you are not able to take a whole lot of risk. Perhaps you have family members who need some heavy insurance or you have too much at stake to take a risk in becoming a consultant, which is a more volatile environment, then you may need to be in a full-time direct hire position. Being in a full-time direct hire position also has the pros of being able to learn whatever you need to learn to grow. When you are bouncing around companies, You may be bouncing around so much that you cannot learn solid skills in any particular field or aspect. So you need to consider these things, the pros of being a full-time direct hire and the cons. Let's talk about being a consultant. First of all, I'll say that being a consultant, it gives you more flexibility and you feel like you are in control. It feels like you have got a palette of assorted colors to paint with. The sky becomes the limit. You could work today in healthcare. Next month, you can work in engineering, just like I did. You have the opportunity to work on a variety of projects, grow your palette even more, a chance to set your own rates, more control over your work-life balance. The cons, however, You've got less job security. There are no benefits in many of these instances. The income can be variable and it can be difficult to find clients, no matter how you try. But one of the pros of being a consultant in my world was to be able to very quickly cover a wide array of industries, aerospace, healthcare, pharmaceutical, gaming of all things, (laughs) video games, I'm telling you, you name the industry, I've worked there. You name the industry, I've taught. You name the industry, they have probably be my clients. From the likes of the FBI and Boeing and NASA and Oceaneering and many more. I very quickly have amassed tons of knowledge that would not have been possible if I was working as a full-time direct hire. Now, my career has morphed from being a full-on project manager doing heavy earned value and test scripts and IT to being a consultant that offers advice to companies. 
that travels the world, showing people how to effectively manage projects. So, depending on where your career is going, you may want to become a consultant to try it out. The question is, how do you get into this world of consulting? I'm going to give you some quick practical tips. Number one, you go onto a website such as Monster Dice Career Builder, Indeed, or UK job sites. If that's your world that you're in, look for the website that is peculiar to the industry and location you're in. But Monster usually works, and I know this firsthand because I've gotten a ton of gigs from Monster. But find one of those sites and sign up and begin to engage with the consultants around you, the hiring consultants. They find your resume, they ask you to interview, you interview, and the opportunities begin coming, and you have to weed them out. And it really depends on your skills. If you're not technical, these days you could suffer. So I encourage you to get a little bit of technicality. Do a Scrum Master training. Do a product owner training with the Scrum Alliance, or go on to Ken Schwaber's website and look into the PSM and the PSPO, and at least that shows you have the aptitude and propensity to be technical to some degree, and that could help you in your job search. But ultimately, you need to get in contact with the hiring folks, the hiring world. Find your hiring consultant. For me, it was Tech Systems, it was the Aerotech Group, and Manpower Professional, and people like that. But you need one of those in your corner to help you relentlessly pound the pavement to find that position for you. You do not have as much ability and clout in industry to do that for yourself, but a hiring consultant can. And hiring consultants have found me six-figure jobs over and over and over again. And I'm talking about over the past 20 years. So if this is an area you want to get into, put out your resume on Dice, on Career Builder, on Monster, on Indeed, and sites like that. Relentlessly update your resume on the regular. And when those consultants come calling, don't just say, "Oh, I don't want that job," or "I can't do that job." Say, hey, can you help me look for a position? A lot of consultants prefer you just work with one hiring person, so that when they're putting your resume forward for jobs, there's not going to be any confusion, and you're not going to be double counted. It's just going to be one person representing you. So those are things you need to consider. In addition to that, LinkedIn. Has become a one-stop shop for recruiters. It's like a free market looking for people who can do what you can. They know that they'll find it on LinkedIn, and all they need to do is lure you from where you currently are to somewhere else. But don't always fall for that bait, because the grass isn't always greener. I'll say as a consultant, don't burn your bridges. Make sure when you're leaving a place, you leave on a good note. You do your best to transition to the next person. Don't slam the doors. Don't leave them high and dry. Be mindful that that could be your firm, and you wouldn't want to be left in a bind. So, my friend, there are pros and there are cons of consulting. The pros: learning so much, so quick. Because they know they need to get you up to speed, so they are going to teach you as much as you need to know to do the job effectively. And we're talking about three months stints, six months stints, sometimes even one month stints. Some of the jobs that I've done as a temp have been weeks. In project management, it's more like months. But if you're working in the, the sphere of pharmaceutical, for example, as an account manager, it could be a very temporary thing. So you need to decide: Is this for me? Can I take the risk? In addition to this, my friends, you may also just find yourself having to be a consultant because you've worked and looked all you can, but there's no direct hire position coming your way. Then what do you do? You go out, you do what you can. 
take the bull by the horns, kick fear. That's false evidence appearing real. What if you fail as a consultant? Well, it's going to be a lesson to be learned and you can get better. And that's what I've learned, my friends, over the past two decades. I've been working as a consultant and I can tell you the benefits outweigh the cost. The benefits outweigh the risk. Would I do it all over again? Absolutely. Because I wouldn't have learned the things that I learned in the different firms I've worked for. Brown and Caldwell as a permanent employee. Honeywell as a consultant. Motorola as a consultant. General Dynamics as a consultant. U.S. Airways as a consultant. And many more. For some of you, you might feel, Phil, it's too risky. I can't do that. Well, it probably isn't for you because you need to be a risk taker to some degree to jump into that world. Sometimes you don't have a choice. So going from being a consultant to being a full-time, full-on business owner is also another step. And for those of you with an entrepreneurial streak, I want to encourage you to let your dream live. If you have a dream of owning your own firm, it could be a consulting firm, it could be a firm that offers services to others, start with baby steps. Register your firm and then begin building your network and offering services on a part-time basis and then grow it from there. But don't kill your dream. If you have a dream, To own your own business, I want you to nurture that dream and begin feeding it because you just never know who you're going to evolve into. You might be the next best thing in the technical or project management world that everyone is dependent on. Maybe there's greatness within you to build software that can help the world as Jobs and Wozniak did. You just never know. So don't choke your dream to death. Give your dream a chance. Let your dream live, but work towards your dream. Build a team around you of people that can help to build that dream, whatever it is. I encourage you to do so. I hope this gave you some insights and encouragement, my friends, and I wish you all the very best in your journey as a project manager. You take care and bye for now.